evening. This is good evening. This is Kathy C. I am um, with Getting Back to Zero here in Cleveland, Ohio today. I am excited about tonight. We have a fantastic guest who agreed to come and talk to me in the week of her book, her book uh, launch this week. And um, I have to say, we all know that I was on with Billy from Better Roads a couple of weeks ago and that, you know, I jokingly called it my cooking show because I don't cook. I only do blenders. And I actually found somebody who understood how I cook. And I am so excited she agreed to come on the show. So with that, I am going to bring Diana, and I want to make sure I don't butcher your name, Diana, Akalzi, here onto the show. How are you, Diana? Hi. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate you um, joining Getting Back to Zero, where you know our whole goal of this show is to really um, show our audience that you can live a sober full life. And you're a big part of, uh, I'm bad with the camera. You're a big yes. part of that. Which is, look, I'm so excited and so proud of you. So Thank Diana, you. we don't know each other that well. So it's kind of fun that I get to ask you all the questions that um, I, I have about this, but I did get the book. Um, it was, it was perfect timing. We got, I got it today in the mail. And um, what I was telling you right before we got on the show is even I can make it. <laughs> Kathy, who doesn't do like tough ingredients, you know, you all boiled this down to, oh my gosh, really, really cool. Like drinks. I already have one bookmarked, you know, that I want to talk about. But um, if I would love for you to talk a little bit about, you know, I, I know just in the research that I did um, on you that you and um, your your colleague, or I don't know if you would say colleague, co-author co on this yeah. are both nutritionists and that you wrote another book. So talk to me a little bit about who you are, what your journey is. I mean, you know, I'm asking you all these loaded questions at nine o'clock here <laughs> on Standard Nine. Um, but, you know, just talk, us, talk to us a little bit about this journey of how you got to the mocktail party um, recipe book. Yeah. So thank you for that introduction. I'm so excited to be here. So yeah, back in 2019, Carrie, my co-author and I, she, we actually went to school together. So we both got our master's okay. at Tufts in nutrition. Oh, and awesome. Yeah, we became really good friends. Um, and we became very passionate about empowering women to have pregnancies without alcohol and to offer them. Well, we, we really noticed a huge gap in the market. We didn't see any alter or healthy alternatives for pregnant women to have in place of alcohol. There was just like really nothing out there. there no, not a lot of and options. just in general. And I don't know if you met Billy from uh, Better Roads yet, but yes. the reason I, I connected with him as I was listening to one of his mocktail things one time and he said, this isn't your Shirley Tom Temple full of sugar, folks. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> I need to know more about him. And then, you know, that was like, uh, you know, when I heard what you were doing, I'm like, this is exactly what we're talking about. Yeah, exactly. And so we had a great opportunity. We were able to write and publish Drinking for Two, Nutritious Moms, or Nutritious Mocktails for the Mom to Be. And it has 45 different mocktail recipes that are, you know, healthy for both mom and baby. And they also, um, it, the mocktails alleviate a lot of those common pregnancy symptoms. So we have recipes in there for morning sickness, for cravings. Oh, where for were you like 23 <laughs> years ago? You know, that's awesome. Uh, I didn't even realize that. That's fantastic. Yeah. So it was like very specific specific for pregnant women. Um, and, you know, we saw a huge success with that book. Like people loved it. Like we were just blown away by all the feedback and our publishers, you know, they, they saw this growing movement, the sober curious movement that's mm -hmm. really taking off. And um, with the success of our first book, they asked us if we wanted to make another mocktail book, but that, that was targeted for all audiences and not just pregnant women. Um, and as dietitians, so Carrie and I are both dietitians, we wanted to make, you know, we, we do love to cook. We love to get into the kitchen and make it, make recipes. Yeah, we're going to have to have you back for, to walk me through other things, you know. <laughs> this is just the start, Diana. This is just the start. You got your work uh, cut out for you, sister, with me, okay? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Bring it on. Um, so we wanted to translate some of that, you know, nutrition into our mocktails as well, because we had come across some that were, 
but pretty loaded in sugar or just not super healthy. It didn't align with, you know, our, our mission and, you know, what we, what we value. And so we really wanted to make mocktails that had healthier ingredients and that used minimal sugar and used other ingredients to really flavor the drinks. Um, and that's kind of how mocktail party was born. And it was just published this week. So I know I'm been... so excited that we get yeah. you in the week of the launch. I am like, this is like the second <laughs> one. You were the second one this week that we're getting the author fresh off the presses. We're so oh, excited. Great. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and yeah, it says 75 plant-based non-alcoholic for every occasion. And I mean, I love, I have to say, like, you know, as I was saying, I just got it. But what I loved is that you have it broken into seven different categories. Yep. Um, and one of my favorite categories that I thought was was really cool is drinks with benefits. And so I want to like the, the yeah. probiotic punch and turmeric tonic and stuff like that. I mean, the uh, one yeah. I bookmarked, because I was thinking if I had had my act together, which we know we I didn't, I wanted to do that water watermelon mojito. Um, that oh. just looks amazing. I cannot wait to make that this weekend. So I actually just made um, earlier today um, and I just posted about it on our. I saw Instagram. that. You know, I I was like all over research. That looks. Look at that with the watermelon. That looks so amazing. If you need a fun mocktail for this weekend, it's a long weekend. You're going to be outside. I highly recommend this one. It's it. Um, it's so refreshing. It's made with watermelon, uh, coconut water. Like it's super simple. Just four ingredients. Um, very refreshing and hydrating. So if it's really hot out. It's a perfect drink. Well, and that's what I liked about this, Diana, is, again, you weren't asking me to buy ingredients I never heard of before. You know, this is yeah. why I'm allergic to cooking, because I'm like, <laughs> I don't understand how to even say this or what aisle I would ever even go down to get half of the ingredients in these plant-based you know, things. And so coconut water. OK, great. You know, like a watermelon. I know how to get that. I don't mean to brag, you know, but like you just it was. <laughs> I guess then you really have your work cut out for you with me, you know, lime juice and like, even like the, the advertise, you know, not advertised, but the shows you've done this week. I mean, you've, you've even said like, okay, this was, or you were great. Cause you were like, I didn't feel like squeezing the limes. I'm yeah. like, yeah, we're going to get along just fine. I don't want to sit there and do that either. You're like, this is organic li lime juice. And I'm like, yeah. okay, you, you, again, you simplified it and you put it in the blender and, and you hit go. It looked like Kathy could do it. And I'm like, okay, this is sober approved and, and, and Kathy approved because I, I could make it now Yay. question for you. Um, cause I don't, I'm not a coconut water person cause I just don't like it plain, but I never, is there a certain kind of coconut water, um, that people should be looking for? Cause again, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. So coconut water there, they come in a lot of flavors these days. So we do recommend right. just picking the plain one because sometimes with the other ones, they do add addition they add sugar okay. um and what we love about coconut water is that it can be pretty versatile and it can be pretty neutral when you add it or combine it with other ingredients so i don't know if you ever tried like adding spinach to a smoothie you don't really taste the oh spinach, every right? morning you, right? yeah like it's my every morning thing everybody makes fun of me like i you know i i have the spinach you know you don't taste that and i exactly I'll use this with my berries and i'll put a little bit of honey like i said my cooking is a blender like that is what i do i am not joking and so that i can do totally understand what you're saying now then okay yeah and so the coconut water it really allows us to work with a great kind of neutral base um and it gives a little bit of sweetness to the drinks because coconut water is naturally sweet so most of the drinks like or you know there's a handful of drinks that do call for coconut water and um it's just to be able to give it a base without loading it with sugar really and again like you won't even taste the coconut water because the other flavors will really shine through that is fantastic. Yeah, that was the one that I saw was kind of a consistent whenever I was looking through this that that caught my eye. Yeah, and maple water too is another ingredient that we've come across. Um, what, not what is it as, called? It's called maple water, not okay. as accessible as coconut water, but also a really good substitute. And you can find that. Does it um, taste at, like maple syrup? Because I'm in if it tastes like maple syrup. Uh, it, it tastes like watered down maple syrup. 
So, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. it's pretty good. And so we do say in some recipes, you know, you can use maple water or coconut water. Um, and, and like you said before, we really wanted to make these recipes accessible to people and make them super simple because when we were thinking about like how, what ingredients we wanted to use, we, we really wanted to make um, these, these recipes easy and with ingredients you could find at your local grocery store. Um, we're not bartenders, we're not mixologists by any means. And so if we can make these recipes, we promise anyone can too. Um, I'm, I'm serious, Diana. Like I was just like, okay, I'm ready to open this and like go, oh, okay. I'm not going to understand how to ask her a question without embarrassing myself on the show. And like literally everything is, is really just basic and healthy. I mean, yes. that's why I like my smoothies that I bring with me every day because it's basic and healthy. And that's what this reminds me of. Exactly. And again, it just comes back to accessibility. Like you can have fun and not have alcohol and it doesn't need to be hard. It doesn't need to be a challenge. Like you can just throw in a few ingredients in a blender and make a delicious mocktail or throw some ingredients in a shaker and you've got yourself a mocktail. It doesn't need to be super complicated. And we wanted to allow people um, or we want to give people access to drinks to to allow them to incorporate them into their lives to eventually hopefully reduce their alcohol intake or or eliminate it completely. Well, and the other thing, I don't know why, and maybe it's, you know, and uh, Billy would laugh at me, Billy from Better Roads, who, who does the alcohol-free stuff. For some reason, in my mind, you were going to say to me in this book, okay, go get the non-alcohol tequila for this mock, you know, for the, for the tequila, or you had a Bloody Mary in here or, you know, whatever it is. And it didn't hit me until I was reading that you don't do any of that. I mean, that would be an enhancement that you and I know I wanted to have Billy on here with us. Um, but you know, and I definitely want to do something together, but that was another thing that I found fascinating about that. There's none of that, you know? So for no. me as a sober person, there's not triggers that I'm thinking of. Like there's one that I want to look up that I saw you post um, that I haven't looked at yet is the sangria because I stay away from anything that sounds wine based at all, because that was my trigger. Wine was my thing. But like, so like I've already told Billy, there's no way I would ever have the alcohol free, you know, products, you know, but something like that, I think I would be open to because it's plant-based and things of that nature. Great. Yeah, exactly. These, yeah, we didn't want to include products because, you know, it is an additional cost as well. And we did want to keep this, you know, again, back to accessibility. We wanted to make these recipes as accessible as possible for people. And that included just using ingredients that you could literally just go to your local grocery store and pick up there and not having to order anything online or, you know, drive to a bunch of different uh, liquor stores trying to find those alcohol free version or alcohol free liquors, which are great for some people and right. they work well. But um, we really wanted to make this with just whole foods and um, ingredient easy ingredients to find. Well, and my other question was because I am, you know, the salsa, and that's the other thing. I mean, I'm excited to go into the summer. And I mean, I know this is actually, and I will say, I know we're, we're coming up on Memorial Day weekend and all that. Yeah. And like, I was excited to launch it with you for, for that reason. But as I was looking through here, what I loved is I saw all the holidays in here, all the different types of, you know, year. Oh, yeah. um, but I'm excited about the summer because, you know, usually I, this is what I bring everywhere I go. <laughs> my, my LaCroix, you know, holiday and season. Yes, exactly. Like I was just like, holy mackerel. And um, I think you have the Irish coffee in there. Which oh, really, yeah. Because and this is a great one for this weekend. Red, white, and that's, blue. That's Stanford. the one I'm talking about. Oh, my gosh, Diana. I was like, I have got to look at that. What is in that? I, I didn't get a chance oh. to. So a lot of fruit, so fruit, to, we use fruit, um, like, so red, white, and blue fruit. Uh, you have the strawberries, white peach, um, blueberries. Then we use white grape juice, um, some wow. coconut water, lemon or lime juice, and then seltzer water. And then you can garnish with some fresh mint. And that's so that it. was my question. You led me into my question, and I didn't even I didn't mean to. But when you said, okay, because you're dumbing it down for someone like Kathy. <laughs> When you say seltzer water, okay, I just finished out all, finished my lemon cellos for the week. So I've got black raspberry. Do you, it's, so when you say seltzer, are you saying like a plain kind? Do you have like, what are we talking about? 
we usually just mean plain, but you know, that doesn't mean you can't experiment too. That's the beauty of this book. And you know, you can, you can try different flavored seltzers and see what you like as well to make these even more special and even more unique to you. That's awesome. So talk to me, Diana, I mean, with doing all of this, um, and you know, it, it sounds like you kind of like almost backwardly walked into this whole thing, you know, um, as far as the, the, the mocktail in the sober world, because I know like, yeah. um, I keep talking about the, the better roads people, um, but their CEO said something once in a podcast that I thought was just genius to saying that this sober world um, that we're in right now is like the wild west. You know, there's mm. just so much to be had, to be done. There's a place for everybody in, in every venue with this. Talk to me about like, I mean, are you, um, are you in sobriety or, you know, like wh what did this journey do for you and how long did it take you all to write this? And I love like the dedication. It sounds like you had a lot of people who had to try things and I, you know, I thought that was awesome. I thought that was great. <laughs> yeah. We, we had a lot of taste testers. We wanted a lot of different opinions so that it wasn't just Carrie and I trying everything. Um, yeah, so it was quite a journey. We started writing it back in February of last year. Um, okay. So we, it was a little under a year because it's been a few months, you know, getting published and um, with the with the publishers. But um, actually, between so I guess it was uh, last year. So we, of course, did a ton of research on the effects of alcohol and health, like going through this whole journey. Like the whole first chapter in this book is about. Um, the relationship alcohol and health have with each other. Yes, and I didn't get a chance. I meant to say that. I, I love that you put that in there. Yeah. And so honestly, Carrie and I have learned so much through this journey because like in a, to become a dietitian, you really don't get a ton of education on alcohol specifically. Of course, you learn about some aspects of it and you do learn about long term effects of alcohol. But, you know, you don't really get a ton of education on it. And so it's really an eye opening experience learning about the impact alcohol can have in our health. And so last year, I guess it was around, I want to say July, I, ch I did an alcohol free challenge, you know, one of those months where you just right. go completely alcohol free. That's what I wondered if you did something like that. Yes. That's awesome. Okay. And and I had been like reevaluating my own relationship with alcohol too. Like anytime I would drink, I wasn't I didn't feel great the next day. I, I was starting to feel more like anxious and kind of down the next day after drinking. And it was something that was just getting worse with time. And I like I just hated feeling hungover though I would just experienced really bad hangovers. I hated it. I just felt like crap the next day. And so I did one of these months and I had done these before, but I had continued to drink afterwards. And I don't know if it was just kind of a accumulation of the books and just learning about the impact alcohol has in your health. And then um, these negative effects I, I was feeling from drinking. And then I, I did that sober or that um, alcohol free month and I felt great. I felt amazing. I started experimenting with a lot of the newer alcohol-free brands that are out there. So I was trying um, like athletic brewing. And of course I was Ooh. making and testing mocktails from the book. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is great. I feel so much better. I'm saving money. Um, I'm sleeping better. Like I even, like my cholesterol levels even improved, you know, like, so not only, you know, I was feeling just overall. You're such so a dietitian that you, you know, I know that. I love I know. that. I, I just got to point that out them. for a second. I'm like, well, what's that? I don't want to learn about that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I, I, yeah, exactly. I'm a dietitian. I love to like track these things. So, um, I like the improvements were so significant and I just felt so much better. And the more time that has gone by, the easier and easier it's gotten for me to just completely stay away from alcohol. And I feel like having uh, options too. So having my mocktails, having all of these new brands that have been popping up like is, is, has made this journey so much easier. And so now I'm, about 10 months alcohol free. Oh, so congrats. <laughs> thank That's you. Awesome. Yeah, it's been, it's been great. And I, I have no intention of going back. Um, and I just knowing the health impact I'm doing for my body by not drinking is also what's really keeping me going as well. Just learning about all those health um, benefits. 
And, and that's the, I think, you know, that, that isn't the reason I stopped, you know, but I, things you were talking about, like anxiety, you mm -hmm. know, hello, you know, was putting gasoline on the, on the anxiety that I had. And I mean, yeah. I, I have anxiety now, but I know how to manage it. I know how to, you know, like not numb out, you know, do those things. Did you yes. find like, what, oh, what was goodness. your experience with what you, you mentioned that, you know, that you had anxiety before that. Yes. Or you it was, it was like, worse. I, Jeff and I are always curious when somebody uses that word. So you yeah, talked to us a little bit about that. After drinking, like the next day, I would just feel like anxious about like the night before, like what I had done. Not that, you know, I was going crazy or anything, but just like you're, you're not yourself when you drink, right? You, right. you change, you change a little bit. And, you know, that would just make me kind of anxious. And I would just feel kind of down, like alcohol can be a depressant. And so um, I just felt kind of, kind of shitty the next day. Right, right. Um, and like a lot of times too, I can reflect on it now, but I found myself like in, when I was stressed out, like I would turn to a glass of wine. Like that was how I right. relieved my stress. Like, right. Like, exactly. Oh. Like I just, that's why I said wine. wine is a trigger for me. I'd yeah. come home from work or hit happy hour, then bring some home and, you know, making dinner, whatever it was. And that's to me, wine was the crutch. It was the everything. Yes. And that's why I'm very careful when I think about wine, because that to me was always the, okay, you know, going to relax. And that did, it didn't know it at the time, but really just made things worse. Yeah, exactly. And like now looking back, I can, I can see like, okay, dealing with your emotions with alcohol, that's not really the best way to go about it. You know, like now I'm forced to address that stress in more productive ways. And, and it's just better for me in the long run. Now, instead of having that glass of wine, I go for a walk or read a book or deal with it in a more way more productive and positive way. And it's just overall better for my mental and physical health. That is fantastic. So talk to me a little bit about like, so you and your friend had did this book together. Talk to me a little bit about like, how did you come up with different things? I mean, how does that happen? You know, like I, I, I always call everything I, I make a concoction because I don't know what I'm doing. And my children suffered through my cooking um, when they, you know, but now they're away at college and college food is better than mom's cooking. And so um, is, is the joke in our family. Um, so, you know, how did you, how did you come up? What did you do? Well, talk to us a little bit about that. So luckily Carrie and I had our first book. We went through the whole process of, of, of making a mocktail book with drinking for two. So we definitely felt more confident going into this one. We kind of knew what measurements worked and what flavors paired well together. So that was really good. That was great to have. And we decided to really focus on breaking this one up into more organized sections, I would say, compared to our last one and sections based off of um, like where people would often drink. So we wanted to be able to provide people with non-alcoholic alternatives in settings where there may be a lot of people drinking. So we started off with um, a classic section. So that the section is uh, basically just your, we took traditional classic drinks and made mocktail versions. And of course you can't do that with all of them because, you know, for example, a whiskey sour, kind of hard to make into a mocktail without using, um, uh, you know, one of those non-alcoholic liquors, right? But, which we wanted to stay away from. So here's an example. And this is one I will be making later, but the Paul, Paul Noma, which yes, is our, yes. our take on the Paloma. Um, and the Paloma is a, uh, a, a tequila based cocktail. And so we wanted to do our version of that. We, we have our basic, mojito which is of course your mojito and then we have our own like zero proof sparkling wine you see that okay cool and then we wanted to also add our own little twist to um cocktail so an example a good example is our coconut mojito so we kind of made this a little bit more interesting um and we and this we really focus on what flavors would pair well together uh, we have a jalapeno margarita in here a strawberry balsamic smash um just a lot of different um unique drinks in this chapter and then you know 
we have a whole section just on brunch. So of course, and we all know brunch can be uh, um, right. a time where lots of people like to drink. You know, I got mimosas, Bloody Marys. So we made a whole chapter on brunches and um, you know, we have, like you said, the Irish coffee. <laughs> well, my mother always had that. And I have like a whole set over here that I like, I was like, I want to make that with you at some point, because that was like a big thing. I'm Irish, Scottish, you know, like, and that was always a big thing at my house. So I thought that was so cool that you had that in there. Oh, awesome. And then we have, of course, the traditional, uh, Bloody Mary. Bloody Marys. Exactly. Coffee. Um, and then we we have a whole chapter on dessert drinks. So we uh, wanted to provide like fun little dessert drinks um, after after dinner drinks. They're delicious. You know, here's an example of one of them: the peanut butter cup martini. I saw that. Oh my gosh, so I love anything peanut butter. That was amazing. Yeah. And you know, we have like fun little garnishes. They're optional, of course. So we just thought it'd be fun to option to offer people if you wanted to have some like little cute peanut butter cups on there. You know, it's all about um, health is all about balance, right? And so I think um, you can definitely have some peanut butter cups along with your mock teenies. Um, I love the peppermint hot chocolate. I mean, like oh, yeah. you, got, you all thought of everything. Yeah, we have really frozen. So obviously these are yes. summer. Um, and like you said, the, we have um, the drinks with a twist section. So these are a little bit more um, nutrition focused because we didn't want to go overboard with all the nutrition as well. Um, we wanted to but, offer people. But they're like simple. Again, yeah. you know, what I like, Diana, is when I looked at it, just because we have a restaurant here in Cleveland, um, and that like has has a brunch and they have a menu like and they have things like this like the turmeric or the golden milk you know things yeah. like that and they're like i don't know like 12 bucks a shot you know and i'm always like oh, wow. i'm not gonna buy that and try yeah. it and then be like oh this is disgusting so i was so excited that like when i could try these things that's amazing yeah exactly again they're just ingredients you could buy at the local grocery store doesn't mocktails don't need to be complicated and we are definitely on a mission to show people that um, and they can be healthy they can be part of a very healthy lifestyle right like you don't need to have like the old-fashioned ginger ale like i think of all right. the maybe like i was like where were i i wish i would have known about you all and billy about a month and a half ago both of my <laughs> nieces are pregnant and do any day now and like we oh. had these sh we had these showers and, and we had virtual showers but but still like i just remember like sherbert it's seven up like all the like disgusting you know like you know the 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 bowls of punch that we would have at oh, the baby showers yeah. over the years and i'm like oh these are just so beautiful and so healthy i can't believe it i love it yeah and we you know we do use juice in some of our recipes but we're very mindful of the quantities you know so it's never going to be too much per serving it'll be um you know it'll be very very moderate amounts of juice when we do use it. And we also do try to use juice that is more nutritionally dense. So you'll see pomegranate juice in there in some recipes. I love pomegranate juice. Oh, yes. So good. And it the best. And pomegranate juice has tons of antioxidants. It's actually I just love pomegranate in general. It's just oh, yeah. so good. So and, and so healthy for you. That and mango are like my two, like, you know, I can't get enough of. So oh, then you'll like um, the ma mango kale refresher. Try that one. So mango kale. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yes. As long as so, I can't taste the kale, I'm fine. Oh, you can't taste it at all. Oh, it's good. so good. It's in, it's in with um, drinks with benefits, mango kale refresher. Drinks. I love that line. The oh, drinks yeah. with benefits. I thought that was such a cool, cool <laughs> title. And I have to tell you, okay. So another confession by Kathy, I've never, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put it out there for anybody who might think like Kathy, which God help us all. Um, <laughs> why would I buy a recipe book? I can find it on Pinterest would be my attitude. And I yeah. will tell you, I have a smoothie recipe book that I have downloaded that I use all the time. It's my go-to um, and it's actually downloaded. So, but, and so I always wish that I had the hard copy and this is another one where I am so glad I actually have the hard copy and it's just, these are things I wouldn't have, oops, I'm going to, I do this at least twice a show. Um, I, I'm not, you know, these, I'm not going to lose them that, I'm, you know, I'm going to be able to put like notes with them, all that. I just, mm -hmm. you know, like in today's modern world, you know, we can go to Pinterest, we can Google, we can do all these things, but I have to say like, this is the real deal. Like, 
You have everything in this book wow. that you could think of. And, you know, when I think of sobriety and us, like we used to pay, you know, $10, you know, at a happy hour for a glass of wine or whatever mm -hmm. to be able to do this and then, and then have ingredients that I can know that I can get. I mean, this to me is as simple. This is the best, like, it truly is like sober approved by Kathy because like, uh -huh. I just, it makes your life simple. And, and so like, I would, I would make this a picture and bring it to a party. I wouldn't have a problem with that. You know, I'd be like, you guys got to try this. When my, my daughter and I are going to Florida in three weeks, I'm going to bring this with me. And we're going to, you know, with my sister and we're going to make some of these. It's awesome. Yay. Great. And you'll see too, like we, in some recipes, if we call for an herb or something like mint, we'll also give you little, suggestions of as to what you could do with leftover mint or what other recipes call for mint so you can also you know make two or three recipes out of the ingredients that you buy for that one recipe like we wanted to you to be able to make a few different recipes with just um, a handful of ingredients that Again, is amazing making it oh easy gosh. for people right that's the thing you're you're simple you boiled it down you're simple it's all in one thing and if you're if you're getting sober curious if you're sober um, and, you know, like I'm a little old school, you know, um, I grew up in the AA rooms, as I call it, you know, and in AA, you're really taught don't do those things that are going to trigger you or like, but to me, this is a healthy lifestyle book. Like this is, mm -hmm. you know, giving you other choices besides, and I, you know, I love LaCroix. I love my, you know, like my waters and, and, you know, and I also always have my water with me. Um, but this gives me something that I can bring to a party or have at home and to have something different. So I exactly. just, I really appreciate you too, like I, and what you're doing, you know, for the, Thank for you. the sober community. So you are going to make a drink. You said, I, I am. I wanted to make a drink. I wanted to show you guys how easy and simple and um, tasty these drinks can be. So I'm going to make, I haven't made this one yet since the book came out. Um, so I'm going to make the Paul Noma. Um, so just a little background, the Paloma, which is, it's a tequila based cocktail made with grapefruit soda. Um, and so our mocktail gets its natural sweetness uh, from coconut water and a hint of honey or agave you can choose. And it gets its tartness from, from fresh grapefruit juice, or, you know, you could just buy a store. Uh, Again, that's why I loved you today. You were like, no, I'm not going to go squeeze all these limes, you know? And exactly. Like, you're like, just realistic. I, like, okay, here we go. Live juice. See, yeah. that's like, what I saw. <laughs> yes, but I was like, I love this girl. Like, I, yeah, you know, what? if it's going to call for a lot of live juice, I'm just going to buy the bottle. And it's totally fine. Like, you can definitely do it. It's really whatever is going to work for you and whatever it's going to make this easier for you. Right. So I'm just going to move this back because I have okay. everything here. All oh, you are up. awesome. Okay. So my ice did melt a little bit. Um, <laughs> I'm going to take a sip of this. Yeah, that's good. So I did rim this glass. You can see here, um, super easy to rim. We love to rim our, our cups. We think it's part of the experience as well. So this Sweet. is just a little lime wedge I put around here and then I dipped this cup in a little bit. Of oh, is that beautiful. how you do it? I never, okay, yeah. see again. Oh, wow. Oh. You were teaching me basics 101. I'm loving this. And then, oh yeah. So real quick, we have a whole part here. It's tools, tools and techniques. And so we even teach you how to muddle and how to rim. It's like you wrote this for Kathy 101. <laughs> you didn't even know me. Yeah. And you didn't know, oh my gosh, I absolutely adore you too. Thank you. Oh, well, you're so sweet. So I'm 49 I, and should know these things, but I don't. So, <laughs> well, the book lays it all out for you. So, you know, just you'll, you'll get, you'll, you'll get it pretty easily. I promise. Oh my gosh. Um, I am so excited. So I'm taking my shaker and I'm just going to add um, half a cup of coconut water. And again, this is just, serves as a nice little base. The other flavors are gonna overpower it, so you won't even taste the coconut water. Um, and then it's about a quarter cup of grapefruit juice. So again, as you can see, like when we do use juice, it's in very small amounts, it's not a lot. Um, and then we're gonna do, let's see here, it's two tablespoons of lime juice. And again, you don't need to squeeze a bunch of limes. You can just buy this. I love it. 
the grocery store. Don't you love uh, the, the the research I did on you? You know, like yeah. <laughs> these are the things I learned. Okay, I'm just realizing I forgot one ingredient, but it's okay. It's the oh. we we do use apple cider vinegar in some of our drinks. I did actually, see that too, and I always have that. Oh, it's so great. So, it so actually we'll pretend adds- you're at my house and I'm handing it over to you right now. Thank you. We'll wing it. You're welcome. <laughs> it actually adds such a great little bite to drinks that um, sometimes, you know, it can mimic like, you know, like alcohol can provide that little bite. You know? um, and so we do find apple cider vinegar gives that little bite without changing um, the flavor too much. And then so you can use honey or agave, whatever aligns with what you believe. You know, I know some people who are vegan choose uh, prefer not to use honey, so we do offer a bunch of different options. And again, like when we do use added sugar, it's like very, very minimal. Like we're only using less than a teaspoon, so it's not a lot at all. You and remind then- me of when I gave up sugar. I so I gave up alcohol, and then I gave up sugar for seventeen months. But I, in my mind, I did, but I didn't realize how much until I was talking to a friend in the sober community and she was like, how much honey do you put in your smoothie, Kathy? I'm like, okay, well, maybe I haven't completely given up sugar. <laughs> so, and then I fell off the wagon and today is day eight of me not having sugar again. So, oh, wow. Ooh, nice. And, stuff. And, you know, if you read the first chapter of our book too, we I saw about- that the added sugar. Um, yeah, we talk about added sugar. We talk about essential ingredients. We even touch upon like non-nutritive sweeteners, which are like the zero calorie sweeteners. And we give our recommendations. So if you wanted to use like long fruit or something in place of agave, yeah, you could totally do that. Like you can customize these drinks too, to better fit your, your dietary needs or your lifestyle. Um, but again, oh. I didn't feel like it was a, you know, it reminds me of what we say in sobriety, we suggest, or this is how we do it. You know, like it's a very sober friendly in the way that we talk in the sober world Mm -hmm. saying this, you know, this is what I did. We're not saying you have to. And it's just not, again, I get intimidated very easy by measurements, by ingredients and all that. And you're Mm -hmm. not, you're just, you're down to basics. Yeah, exactly. I just added a dash of salt. That'll kind of nice. It's have to have that in a a tequila, well, not tequila, but in a, uh, in the Paloma, the traditional one has a little salt and it actually brings out some of the sweetness too when you add salt. And then that's it. So then you're just gonna, I probably should take this a little bit more. Um, but hey, yeah, you said you're not a mixologist. You you are a dietitian. We, exactly. we do not expect this, okay. Um, and that is it. So you're just putting those ingredients together. You're gonna throw it into your glass and then we are gonna top it off with a little seltzer water. And again, like we do just say plain seltzer, but if you have lime salsa or lemon or flavored, it's okay to add it. Um, lemon or lime will go great with this. You can kind of experiment too based off of your preferences. And they're just gonna top it off because again, a Paloma is made with grapefruit soda and grapefruit soda tends to be really high in sugar. I was gonna say it's, it's probably <laughs> very tart if you don't, you know. What I made, I made with Billy a couple of weeks ago, um, Something with pineapple, and he's like, "How does it taste?" I'm like, "Like I'm licking a pineapple. I need to do something." And I think that would have helped. It was so. It was like a gin pineapple thing, and I was like, "Whoa! Like what is this?" So you're teaching me a lot already. Thank you, Bill. Yeah, and thank you too. Yes, <laughs> the grape, the the coconut water, and the tiny bit of agave that we added. It's more than enough to sweeten this um, without having to add like a ton of sugar. And that's it. Like that's it. And then you could, of course, garnish this Cheers. with some grapefruit and lime. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> yeah, the, the garnishing and all that. I mean, I just, yeah, I love doing that. Wow. Delicious. Um, that's so cool. Yeah. Um, so we can buy this on Amazon. I did see that. Um, yes. where, like what, uh, where else or, you know, we'll put your information up on how to do that. Um, anything else you want to share with us? Any thoughts, any new adventures that you want to highlight that you're doing anything like that? Cause I definitely see us partnering, you know, with more things, you know, like, yes. you know, like teach Kathy how to cook, you know, in sobriety, you know, you might go back <laughs> to drinking, it. but I'm going to learn. Um, no, but, um, you know, there, there's a lot, I think we can partner on, you know, definitely. Um, you know, as I said, Jeff and I like to, 
you know, we, we call it being, you know, sober approving things and, you know, just saying the, the sober full lifestyle. So is there anything else? So on Amazon, anywhere else that people yeah. could buy this? So it's available wherever books are sold. So okay. on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, Target, Walmart, a lot of indie bookstores. Okay. So you should be able to access it pretty easily. And if you do buy it, we would really, really appreciate giving us a review. Reviews are so important nowadays. They so, are. um, they really are. So if you could leave us a review, we would really appreciate it. And you can follow Carrie and I are call, we call ourselves the sober dietitians. You can follow us along on Instagram. We're always sharing great tips and recipes. And you are. Yeah. Chatting. Yeah. We like, we're just, we're so passionate about this movement now and really talk. We love talking about health and alcohol and that relationship and showing people that you can, have fun without alcohol and then you can also reap so many health benefits by reducing or eliminating your alcohol intake well you so. also talked about cholesterol you know like hey i hadn't thought about that you know diana you gave me a whole no another thing to not worry about that i wasn't worrying about so yeah cholesterol no, but it's, blood it, it, pressure weight it can help so many different things yeah. It's so fantastic. But um, are you working on, I mean, I know this just came out, so I'm asking yeah. you, oh, are you working on anything else? Is there anything else we should, you know, trending coming up that we should know about? Um, so we are on Instagram at, um, at the Sober Dietitians, and we also have a blog that's really, Ooh. has really great information about health and alcohol. And we also give like fun tips too on how to cut back on alcohol or how to reduce your alcohol intake. Um, and we cite a ton of different research papers too. And we do talk about health. So if you're ever interested in looking up or reading about the research, then I definitely recommend checking out our blog. It's called the sober dietitians.com backslash okay. blog. Um, All right. We'll make sure we get that up there um, as well. This is, and this is kind of a nice segue because Tuesday night, um, I'm bringing in sober powered woman. I don't know if you know, okay. Jill and, you know, she does the whole science and, you know, behind, you know, yes. all of this too. So no. this is kind of like, I feel like we're like, you know, bridging the the next step to what Jill will have to offer as far as information as well. Awesome. Um, but thank you so much for taking your time, a uh, time out of your hectic, hectic schedule. <laughs> I mean, I was, like I said, I was following you all on Instagram this week and I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know how you fit us in. And, and we're just so honored that you no. would let us help promote you and I hope we can do future endeavors. I know that Billy is very excited to work with you from Better Roads as well. Yeah. And um we will be in touch. If you will stay on Diana, but I'm gonna sign off from from Cleveland from getting back to zero. Thank you all uh, and have a wonderful safe Memorial Day weekend. Jeff and I will be checking in. We are we don't have regular things scheduled this weekend, but we will be popping on and um checking in to see how everybody's doing. And as always you are welcome to join our community and check in and tell us how you're doing. Thank you very much and have a great Thursday night, everyone.